Dutch should know by now. I've known him since fifth grade. We grew up best friends. He should know better than call me out. <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm. My name is Kevin and I'm out here in the garden. I hope all of you are having a blessed day and thank you so much for taking your time to tune in to this video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, so everybody's been asking about the little bugs that we uh, put in the garden. Hold on, I gotta see something here. So I just seen this weird looking wasp laying on here that I've never seen before. I don't know if I can even get this in there. But I was just curious if this wasp wasn't eating these squash bugs. So I'm going to show you guys. See all those squash bugs right there? We have not sprayed anything on here yet. And uh, we did put the little package of the green lace wings in there. And I, to be honest with you, i never seen anything hatch. So I don't know if, the, if we got a bad bag of eggs or what happened. But I don't know where that wasp went. I was hoping he was eating some of those squash bugs. But anyways, you guys can see we got squash bugs. Uh, we might actually end up spraying some neem oil on here. But if you guys do that, if you use neem oil, you want to do it at night. Uh, you don't want the bees to get in it because it can harm your bees. So that's the update on those bugs. To be honest with you, I have not seen a single one hatch. So I don't know. If we got a bad batch of eggs or what happened i will tell you our cucumbers have been yielding like crazy this year i've got a counter full of cucumbers right now in the kitchen we need to figure out what we're going to do we've been eating them as fast as we can uh, we need to figure out if we want to make pickles or what uh actually this year i got a good little amount of dill planted because i love spicy dill pickles and this is our dill plants we got right here and we got some purple hall peas growing they're not quite ready yet well this one just about is probably actually so everything's going good been eating a lot of cherry tomatoes so if you guys watched one of the last videos was butchering the meat chickens and no i have not taken the fence down yet or moved the chicken tractor that's something i gotta do hopefully this weekend look at this Sucker just landed on my hand and kind of freaked me out. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do today is I actually got something else I want to talk about. So um, I showed you guys uh, our Anatolian shepherd the day I made the video where we took Bear to the groomer and got him brushed and all that. And a lot of you got on our channel and commented and said, hey, here's what we do. Here's what we think is the problem with your dog. Uh, a lot of you thought it was fly bites or some kind of fly irritating the dog where she was scratching. I checked her ears. I don't see any mites or nothing like that. So I think uh, it's either the horse flies or the whatever kind of flies. And thankfully, a lot of you were sending us links to products and stuff that you use on your dogs. And that's why... We appreciate the comments so much and all the feedback but i got online and this is what i went with this is a brand called swat clear fly repellent ointment and uh it says it was safe for dogs there was a lot of uh, different ones that you guys recommended and a lot of them are sold out on amazon that is where i ordered this so if you guys are interested in this i'll try to put a link down in the description um it had a lot of good uh reviews on uh, Amazon so we're gonna go with it evidently it's uh, useful for all kinds of animals but today I got to get busy uh, I got to get all these meat birds bagged up and put in the freezer it's been almost 48 hours now and uh, I got a little time so I'm gonna try to knock it out I don't want to keep having to put ice in here for a long time but uh, I think it they are to the point now to where they are tender enough that we'll put them in the freezer and uh, they will cook up quite deliciously when we're ready for them. So I'm going to get all that prepared and then I'll come back and video a little bit. Alright guys, 
I'm gonna fill this up with water and uh, I got some uh, poultry bags that are the shrink type. They're plastic and you stick them in water. You gotta get up to boiling. The water's gotta be like 195 degrees. You put your chicken in, uh, stick a straw in the cavity, twist it around that, put your zip tie on, dip them for a little bit, pull them out, and uh, the bag shrink, the plastic shrinks around the chicken. The air expels out of the bag through the straw, and then you pull your zip tight, your zip tie tight. So uh, while this is warming up and filling up, and I get this up to boiling water, we'll go uh, Dr. Daisy's ears, because that's something we need to get done. I just got the stuff in today. And uh, we'll talk more about these shrink bags. I know you guys have seen probably a hundred different videos on uh, processing chickens, just like I talked about the other day. And I'm sure you've seen a hundred videos on how to uh, bag them and what different things people use and all that type of stuff. But I'm just going to show you the way we're going to do it this time. This is the first time I'm using these plastic shrink bags. But some of the videos I've seen on YouTube, some of them go really successful and some of them don't look too great. A lot of them has a lot of air and stuff in them. So uh, we're going to try them out and uh, see how it goes. But let's go Dr. Daisy's ear real quick. All right, let's see if we can't get Daisy over here. She's over there guarding her goats. She's over there laying by the pond. My old jerk face. Come here, Daisy. Come here, girl. And of course, all the nosy goats has got to come too. They think it's feeding time. Come on, Daisy. We ain't feeding you guys. Come here, Daisy. We're gonna doctor your ear, girl. Huh. No jerk face. You ready to get your ear, doctor? Let me set this camera up. Pretty. Where is he? All right, guys. So if you guys remember, if you watched the previous video where I talked about her ears, she just has these little sores on both sides of her ears, and she scratches them constantly. And I have noticed now that a lot of you have have mentioned it, I have noticed some flies around it. So everything I've read online says to kind of put this on, uh, cake it on pretty thick, and it's real creamy. I want to say almost kind of like peanut butter, so it should stay on pretty good. So what we're going to do is go ahead and get that on. You go ahead and lay down. You're a good girl. <laughs> so it says it's fly repellent ointment. You ready to get your ears doctored, girl, huh? Yeah. There you go. Keep them old nasty flies off of there, won't it? <laughs> Roll over. Urgh! Roll over and I'll scratch your belly. There you go. Alright, good girl. Put a little thicker. Hold on. Good girl. You showing them your teeth? Huh? Alright. You should be good to go now, girl. No nasty flies hopefully leave you alone. We'll have to check check you after a while and see if it stays on good. Yeah, you showing off in front of the camera? She's a show off. Come on, get up. Get up. I gotta go bag them chickens, girl. Hold on. Where, where are you going? Huh? Show everybody your cute smile. Smile. Alright, let's see. I can get a close up here. So that ointment's white, and you can see the sores already started looking a little better this morning. They were kind of dried up, so I didn't see any flies on them. Alright. The goats come in, they're getting a fresh drink of water, and there is trouble. Jerkface Jr., he still jumps out, and as soon as he sees me, he jumps right back in the pen. Alright, bud? Alright, good girl. Alright, guys, so if you follow Keeping It Dutch, he just made a video and he called me out and he says, Hey, go tell Hidden Heights Farm, I think they're fixing to butcher some chickens, that he'll never have a chicken bigger than ours that we raised on our farm. So I got the scale out, and this is the first chicken I grabbed. This is one of the bigger ones, I think. I don't know. We'll have to look around a little bit. But I just want to show you guys. There's nothing in here. Maybe a little bit of water. Nothing at all. I got this digital scale here. I'm going to zero this out. I 
All right, I'm gonna show you guys. Ugh. All right, zero, 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 zero. Nothing funky going on. Seven point one. Seven pounds, 15 ounces, seven pounds, but yeah, that's right, seven pounds, 15.2 ounces. That's almost an eight pound bird, Dutch. <laughs> and uh, that's only the first one. And I think there's some that's quite a bit bigger in there, but I wanted to make a video footage of that. I want you guys to go tell Keeping It Dutch that Hidden Heights Farm knows what they're doing. His chickens were actually three weeks older than ours when he butchered his. Ours was right at eight weeks. I think he said his was at 11. So anyways, go tell him what's up now. All right, guys, we got our bags. And like I said, this is the first time doing this. And I'm hoping these bags are big enough. And it does say to put the bird head down, which you don't have a head, but you want the legs sticking up. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to get these big birds in here, actually. Golly. This is a pretty good fit. Oh man. And these these birds do not have the necks on them at all. We cut all that off as well. So no extra weight there. Alright. So we got them in there. I don't know if it's perfectly straight. All right, legs are up, and these poultry bag kits come with a little straw. You're supposed to stick down in their cavity a little bit, just like that. Also comes with zip ties. Of course, my hands are all wet now. All right, and it said to have a pair of pliers ready so you can pull them tight. We got our water up to boil there. All right, so there is pretty much an eight pound bird in here. I know it's not exactly uh, square on the package, but. Let's get this turned around. All right, so I'm just gonna get this in there. Before you do it, you want to pull the straw up just a hair so it's not touching anything down there. Alright. Alright. Move the camera. Looks like it's nice and tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna squeeze this, pull the straw out, and cinch up that zip tie. Looky there, guys. That is a seven pound, 15 ounce bird. That is awesome. Straight from the farm. All right, guys, so I got the chicken in here, in the bag, on the scale. You see there, 715. And I went ahead and ordered these labels when I ordered these bags. So what I'm going to do is, every one of them, I'm going to put the date and the weight on there. But first, you want to uh, make sure you get this dried off. Really good. So 715. It's a whole chicken. That's why I grabbed multiple markers. Alright, date is, what is the date today? June 26th, so 6, 26, 7, 15, all right. And then the birds will go straight into the freezer. I'm gonna have to make some room. Got a lot of deer meat in there and some honey frame. So there you go. You've seen how easy it is to raise your own chickens, process them, and then bag them, stick them in the freezer. I've got 23 more left to do, so I'm gonna get busy doing that. And uh, 
I'll uh, keep checking to see if I got a bigger one. And uh, if I got one bigger, I'll be back and I will show you guys. But uh, Dutch should know by now. I've known him since fifth grade. We grew up best friends. He should know better than call me out, especially to a friendly competition. Woo! All right, I am done with the 24 Cornish Cross meat chickens for 2020 freezer camp. Just turned the stove off, got the last one in the bag. And the heaviest one was actually the first one we did. And I went ahead and I wrote down the record. I kept the records and wrote down the weights. 715 was the biggest one. And you see tons of sevens and sixes. We even had one four, so one small one. And about ran out of freezer space. But man, I really like those bags. They sealed up nice and tight. Got some in here. Got some catfish. I gotta move some stuff around so I can close that a little better. But anyways, guys, uh, there you go. That is how you raise, process, and put away 24 Cornish Cross meat chickens. If you guys didn't check out the video of us butchering them, uh, go check out the, check that out. I'll put it in the uh, chicken playlist, I believe, on our channel. And uh, this just shows you that anybody can raise chickens. You know, I'll show you. I'll pan around here and show you guys. So we had them in like a 40 by 40 area that we raised these 24 meat birds in. They never crowed. They never hardly make any noise. They're a little stinky. But what I'm trying to say is I know a lot of people want to get to where they're self-sufficient, raise their own food and this and that. You know, uh, you can get a couple hens, raise eggs, or you can get a batch of these meat chickens and raise them for eight weeks is all you got to do. Feed them, water them every day. And I mean every day because they eat and drink a lot. And you're going to have a freezer full of chicken just like we do. So I don't know if you guys see, but I'm soaking wet, sweating. Got chicken juice all over me, everything else. I really like those shrink bags. I've never used those before. Uh, from now on, when we do chickens, I will definitely do that. I don't know if they work for fish and other stuff like that, but they're really amazing how well it shrinks down and gets all the excess air out. So uh, I'm gonna go check on Daisy here in a minute and see how her her ear is doing. Go get me a cold drink and uh, try to get this video uploaded here soon. But uh, if you guys are new to the channel, like I said, please hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment and tell us how you heard about us. And uh, let us know, do you guys raise your own chickens? Do you butcher your own chickens? What do you think about the way that I did it here, uh, sticking them things in the freezer? So thank you guys so much for following us and all the support. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.